Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Got a Leanne McAdoo report coming up. Talking to the bobbleheads at South by Southwest. But right now, let's talk to Mike and then Randy, Chad, and Tony. Mike, what do you think is going on with this mystery Malaysia Airlines Flight 370? Maybe, uh... Oh, go ahead. What do you think happened? Alex. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you today? I'm good, brother. What do you think's going on? Well, it's a pleasure speaking to you, first of all. Uh, secondly, this could just be one of these rare, rare situations where it could be an actual hijacking. Um, no, no, I agree, because every time it's a real hijacking, they never say it's a hijacking, and the, and the jihadis fly it into the water, usually as payback for something. I totally agree. Go ahead. Yeah, but, yeah but usually if, if it's something staged, okay, there, there's some type of evidence by now that, you know, they, they can't hold out this long. And the media is all lined up, ready to push some agenda. Absolutely. No, no, I agree. It could be a real hijacking. The only issue is where's the debris? Well, that is a question, you know. I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, if it was a real hijacking, uh, it, it, you know, the evidence is going to be extremely hard to find because, you know, obviously uh, they put their minds to it. Um, you know, that's, that's my scenario. It's always a possibility. I just think that if it was a staged event and, and this could have been a drill or something, we would have seen some type of evidence come out by now, like you said, with some sort of agenda, you know, to, to follow it up. Um, I agree with you. And, and I mean, I'm not trying to say these guys are guilty. They just look like the type of guys they choose that aren't that big, but still look like they're in shape and the looks in their eyes like they're they're not trying to act aggressive and mean on a mission but they can't help the fact that they look completely focused and and, just, and it's just snapshots of video it's just they look like hezbollah type uh special forces people hey can i ask you a question a little bit off topic yeah okay. sure with everything that's unfolding in our great country here in, in your gut feeling, do you feel that when the time comes, do you think it's going to be some type of tragic event, or do you feel that society is just going to, you know, fold out into this whole thing? Man, that's a big one. Um, I, I think it's what Dr. Stallman said earlier. It's really up to us and what we do and how we make changes and how we speak out and how we vote with our dollars and what we stand for. But it doesn't matter because it's the animating contest of life. We have to fight back against the tyranny or it's, you're, not, you're not even alive. I mean, survival is success. Our entire development was on the edge until just 6,000 years ago or so with the development of agrarian civilization. And so not fighting back and not standing for something and turning into jellyfish and becoming decadent slobs is our greatest threat. So we've seen the enemy, it is us, look in the mirror. We have bad government because we become bad people. But it's going to be crazy. I think you're going to have mega plagues, real and manufactured, super bugs are already out there. I think it's going to kill hundreds of millions. I think you're just going to, I mean, you, you, things are unsustainable the way they are because the public is not hard. The public is soft, myself included. And nature abhors a, an, an anathema, a, an enigma, a, a, a fraud, an infomnia. I don't know what word I should use. It's a, it, it's a, it's a joke. It's an unnatural, shuffling, weak, soft people loving their programming, loving their servitude. I mean, the New World Order is going to be allowed to kill all these people and probably a lot of us with them. And quite frankly, the New World Order is right. It's natural that slovenly, weak slobs who aren't animated with the spirit of liberty will be annihilated. The only issue is the globalists are helping them be dumb slobs so they can control them instead of being chivalrous even in their evil if they were going to be evil and believing they're so great that 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 they could empower humanity and still be number one within that system and uh, it's just so important I, I know i always just endlessly talk about that because i want to see people successful i see some guy with a beautiful wife i don't get mad at him and say she should be mine 
Or I see somebody with a really cool house. I don't get mad their house is better than mine. Now, I get mad if they steal it from me or somebody else. Then I want to go after them. The number one secret to having great health and long life is having high levels of glutathione. This master antioxidant is required by your body to stop free radicals, keep cells young, remove chemical and heavy metal toxins, support immunity, support liver functions, stop inflammation, and much more. The results of optimal levels of glutathione in your body are more mental and physical energy, stronger immune system, greater endurance, and more. Do you know the number one secret superfood that helps increase your glutathione levels up to 64 percent or more it's unheated whey protein powder from grass-fed cows this health food is amazing in its ability to do so much for virtually everyone introducing one world way an industry first unheated whey protein powder from grass-fed cows call 888-988-3325 that's 888-988-3325 or visit oneworldway.com that's one world w-h-e-y.com it's time for a home security quiz. What effective home security device is smaller than a coffee cup, fakes out burglars into thinking someone is home at your house while you're away, plugs into any wall outlet, is recommended by many police departments, and sells for less than $30? Yes, it's fake TV. This year, about one in every 50 U.S. homes will have a break-in, with burglars usually picking the easy target, a dark house that looks like no one is home. Fake TV is a small electronic security device that makes it look like someone is home watching TV by simulating the light from a real TV. Fake TV could be the difference between coming home to a secure house or one that's been ransacked. To get your fake TV for only $29.95 with free shipping, go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. Paid for by Stan's Marine Associates Investment Research. Hey, Dan, did you hear Obama took a pay cut? Oh, yeah? Yeah, he took a 5% pay cut because that's what other government workers were losing due to last year's sequester. Well, you know that's peanuts for him, right? I mean, he gets paid a pretty hefty salary as president, but did you know that he also makes an additional $72,000 on average per month on the side? Wait, President Obama collects money from something other than his job? Crazy, right? Where's all this extra cash coming from? Well, last week I came across a website called SecretIncome12.com, which explained exactly where the money comes from. But the cool thing is, it also shows how guys like you and me can rake in thousands of dollars every month by taking advantage of essentially the same income secret Obama uses. You mean there's a way I can do this for myself? Come on, that sounds too good to be true. If you don't believe me, go to SecretIncome12.com and check out the story. It's totally free and you don't have to sign up for anything. What's that website again? It's www.secretincome, the number 12.com. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. All right, let's go to your phone calls. The Malaysia flight. What do you think happened? 370. I'm leaning towards hijacking and somebody flying into the ocean and it wouldn't be the first time they didn't find any debris for a while. But I'm not sure about that. And I don't want to say these guys that are getting on the plane are guilty just because they're Iranian. But that's the Iranian style, and it's happened before into the Mediterranean, into the uh, Persian Gulf over there, where they get on board the planes and then fly them right down into the water. There's also been cases where Egyptian military, multiple times, the planes get blown up. And that's probably the Israelis. If the, if the Egyptian military doesn't play ball, there's been a bunch of cases of, of, you know, you got 20, 30, 40, 50 Egyptian top brass on an airplane, they blow those up. So I, I don't know. I mean, this is a real mystery. And Mike Adams has a really interesting story that's up on Infowars.com. I want to get him on tomorrow if he can come on via Skype or even in studio uh, and uh, get into the, just, just the craziness. In fact, I had that article and now I can't find it. Uh, maybe reprint it for me, but here's the article up on InfoWars.com by Kit Daniels. Missing Malaysian flight similar to lost McDonald flight. And I wanted to go over some of the um, points he makes. It's just really interesting. Here's another one. This is unbelievable, but there's video of it. It's up on InfoWars.com. Feminist control freaks want to ban the word bossy because that might hurt them because they're bossy. 
These are bossy control freaks that want to rule everyone and say you're guilty because you're a man or you're white or whatever, and then you do whatever they say politically because they have Beyonce come out and tell you that, you know, calling henpecking control freak women, there's control freak men as well, but it is kind of a trait known to some women, uh, that that is illegal, folks. You will, you will ban white bags. They're hateful. Brown bags are hateful. Everything's hateful except the New World Order putting cancer viruses uh, in your vaccines. Yeah, here's the article, and we're going to your calls. Disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 begins to demand supernatural explanations. By the way, my buddy I know is out there listening. I want to give him the code. We are going shooting today. We are going shooting today. That's not really code for anything. We are going shooting today. But uh, he, he was texting me earlier that my phone died. I need to call my buddy. I forgot and tell me we are going shooting. Uh, side issue. Uh, dis I just had a feeling he was listening, so I just said that. Disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 begins to demand supernatural expectations or explanations. And it goes on to say that the phones are calling people and, call and calling back home and calling computer systems. The Washington Post is reporting four mind-bending possibilities, none of which seem possible. Uh, the kidnapped explanation, the plane somehow landed somewhere without leaving a radar signature of any kind. All the passengers being held hostage and were thus still alive. Their mobile devices are somehow within cell tower range and yet for some reason have not been confiscated. Maybe this is all just some big diversion for the war they're about to start in Ukraine. I don't know. Um, who knows with the globalists? This could be some mass diversion. My mending uh, possibility too. The Stargate explanation, the teleportation portal of some kind, like the Bermuda Triangle, exists and has disappeared to the alternate universe where Al Gore lives with the man bear pig. Uh, Mind-bending possibility three, the failed search explanation. Far more mundane explanation supposes that the massive multi-day search for the plane wreckage and debris simply hasn't stumbled upon the correct location yet. Uh, that could be it, and it's a hijacking. Number four, advanced military weapons explanation. that They just obliterated it or vaporized it with... Some of the Philadelphia type experiment stuff. We must stick to the mundane explanations until more searches can be conducted. Yeah. Or it just be old fashioned hijackers. Or it could have been remote controlled to another base by hackers or by government or by the Easter Bunny. I don't know. Let's move quickly now to your calls. Tony in California, thank you for holding. What do you think is happening with the missing airplane? I think you got it pretty much spot on. I think it went down. I'm hoping these guys are sitting on a tarmac, but uh, when they're talking about supernatural stuff, they're just milking the story. That's interesting. Do you, what does your gut tell you? I think um, I think it was a hijacking. I'm hoping those guys are on a tarmac somewhere, but um, I'm thinking, yeah, they they took it down. You know, I tend to think. Who do you think took it down? Um, oh, it's kind of strange. It's flying out of Malaysia, so that'd be kind of. I think um, what you were talking about before. I, I'm pretty much sure, like uh, someone out of Russia or um, Iran, one of those two. Interesting. I appreciate your call. Well, Malaysia is a mainly Muslim nation. And that's the kind of place where, you know, the real folks that really want to do something can get on board. But again, it may not be. I don't want to sit here and pass blame on people, even though they're suspects, uh, reportedly. I, I, I just think they look like capable, very serious people who are on a mission uh, and are whacked out of their brains a little bit. But, but maybe that's a video still they just chose to make the guys look bad. Maybe they're totally innocent. In fact, I bet, I bet they are innocent. I bet Obama's innocent of everything as well. Uh, let's talk to Randy in South Carolina. Randy, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. What's on your mind? Well, I've uh, been thinking about this, and you know, I don't think it was a hijacking. The reason I say that is because these these cockpits are hardened now. Ever since 9-11, they're hardened. Uh, the the check-in security is, is heightened. It'd be very difficult for some a couple of guys to get on the airplane and hijack it without the pilots at least being able to call a tower somewhere, a radio uh, traffic controller somewhere. Unless they got a hand grenade on and said, 
tell them not to contact anybody, let me in the cockpit or I'm going to detonate this hand grenade. But I don't even believe that because there have been other real hijacking cases where guys had guns and stuff and people fought them and sometimes beat them.